Welcome, dear friends and investors. Welcome to our monthly communication on markets and investing. So, we're going to talk about six things in this month's communication. We will talk about the analysis of the fourth quarter results. The earnings season is over. We look at the trends and what that means. We look at the FII's coming back to the Indian markets. We look at the Nifty 50 consensus earnings. We look at how India stacks up on GDP growth across some of the peer countries. The quality and breadth of growth that we've seen in the economy. And lastly, we will touch upon about two or three companies in each sector and how they have performed in the current earnings season. So let's start with the broad earnings trend for the fourth quarter of the financial year 22-23. As you know, uh, We've been talking about this consistently for the past few quarters. And earnings, as you all know, is one of the important determinants of how stock prices perform. And I must say that the picture in Q4 has been very, very heartening. As you all know that in the first three quarters of the year, there was a massive impact of rising commodity costs, rising energy prices, rising power costs, and rising logistics costs, which impacted the non-financial companies in the top 500 companies. And if you remember, we had quantified that, that the 420 odd companies which are non-financial, we saw a 550 basis point reduction in EBITDA margin resulting in a negative operating leverage at a PAT level. But if you look at this earnings season, the latest earnings season in Q4, I think the picture is heartening. While top line has grown by 4% from third quarter to fourth quarter, uh, we have seen that EBITDA has actually improved or grown by 15%. So we now have a positive operating leverage when it comes to EBITDA growth quarter on quarter, right? I'm not talking about year to year, but I'm talking Q4 versus Q3 of last year. And of the 550 basis point of margins that we lost, finally, in the non-financial companies, we have clawed back almost 150 basis points. So we believe that there is more expansion in EBITDA margins that we will see in the first quarter and the second quarter of this new financial year, which should continue to have a favorable operating leverage at the PAT level. And it is not surprising that Finally, in April and May, as the result season started to progress, the markets have responded very positively. The breadth of the market has improved and a lot of stocks have given very handsome returns. And while there are other factors, to us, the most important factors was the improvement in EBITDA margins and the profitability, which was better than expected. And therefore, if you now look at a two-year CAGR of the top 500 companies, I think what is interesting is that on a two-year CAGR basis, which is from March 21 to March 23 for the top 500 companies, top line is up 17.5% and bottom line CAGR has been a very healthy 22%. So, therefore, we believe that with the earnings coming back, that gives a very solid fundamental reason for the markets to do well. After 
very aggressive selling by FII's last year with the onset of the Russia-Ukraine war, well, they almost took out $35 billion out of the Indian markets. We've seen a resumption of FII flows back into India. And obviously, one reason, as we've mentioned in the past, is that it looks like that interest rates have topped out very clearly and therefore money should flow back to emerging markets. But there is another interesting data that I would share with you. If you look at some of the countries in Asia Pacific, right? And usually the uh, average profits that a country delivers in the first quarter compared to the full year, right? So if you take the full year as 100% of the target achieved of consensus, the historical average is that 24% of that earnings or roughly a quarter of that gets booked in a particular quarter. And if you look at the rankings now, India actually stands out second after Indonesia where almost 26% of the full year's profits for calendar 23 have already been achieved in the first quarter itself. And that is also one of the reasons why we believe that FIIs are coming back to India because of the strong earnings growth story. Also, we've seen that by and large, the consensus estimates for Nifty 50 have remained pretty stable uh, after the full year earnings for 22-23 are out. We also had another good piece of news which is on the GDP front, right? And if you now look at the rankings of the G20 countries, and as you know, India is a host to the top 20 countries or the G20. And if you look at the GDP growth performance of the G20 countries, you will see that India actually tops the chart. India is the fastest growing amongst the G20 countries, clocking a 6.1% GDP growth in calendar year 2022. And that also brings India to the center stage when it comes to comparison between developed and developing countries. And this growth uh, in the fourth quarter where India delivered a 6.5% GDP growth was far better than what most economists had predicted. And this growth has been very, very broad based. So agriculture, manufacturing, construction, trade, finance, mining, electricity, and community services. Every single line item contributed to strong GDP growth. But what is most important is that manufacturing and construction have delivered very, very strong growth. And why? As you all know, we've been very bullish on manufacturing as an investment theme over the next couple of years. We are starting to see that in the real numbers as well. And construction bouncing back and delivering a 10% growth is also very critical because construction is the largest employer of non-skilled labor in the country, right? We have seen that consumer trends were very, very weak because construction activity was low during the COVID periods. Now, uh, whether it is infrastructure or it is real estate, the construction activity around the country has picked up massively and uh, they contribute, co construction contributing significant amount of growth means that it's a leading indicator 
that if this momentum continues, then the demand revival at the bottom of the pyramid should also happen. Agriculture also contributed 6%, which is also good news for demand going down a couple of months and quarters down the line. So on the whole, India has delivered very solid GDP growth, both it has outperformed economists' expectations within India, but it also stands tall in terms of ranking amongst a lot of the leading economies of the world. And therefore, it is but natural that now foreign investors and capital typically tends to chase where growth and profitability opportunity is the highest. Coming now to our portfolio bets and how some of the companies in various sectors in the fourth quarter have fared, and I must say that the results have been very, very heartening. If you look at financials, and if I talk about the top three financials across our portfolios, they would be Bajaj Finance, ICICI Bank, and HDFC Bank. Of the three, Bajaj outperformed the consensus estimates uh, and they have also increased their guidance for growth in the coming year. And therefore, the perception that Bajaj from this base will probably see a slowdown in growth, uh, I think was a wrong perception. I think the confidence is coming back and growth, which we always believed, will continue to be very strong, has also been now guided by the company. ICICI Bank, as steady as it gets, delivered in-line performance. HDFC, while the numbers were good, uh, there continues to be a higher OPEX, considering the merger with HDFC Limited. Uh, so overall, the results were, uh, were satisfactory, but they were slightly below consensus estimates. But we don't think that in the longer run, uh, you know, growth should pick up. And as the merger gets closer and closer, once the merger is done, we believe that the stock should perform reasonably well. Coming to the consumer sector and the top three companies in our portfolio, which is United Spirits, Tata Consumer and Varun Beverages. Uh, United Spirits uh, delivered very good margin growth based on improvement in the mix. We believe that this should be followed up with strong volume growth in the future as well. Tata Consumer continued its march towards innovation. They launched 33 new products in financial year 22-23. And this was on top of another 22, almost 22 odd products that they had launched in FY22. So they continue to develop into a full-fledged FMCG major from the Tata stable. Coming to Varun Beverages, absolutely standout performance, both from a volume and margin perspective. They also beat consensus estimates very, very handsomely. And the stock has done very well. Uh, we have trimmed and taken some profits off the table, but we continue to like the growth story in Varun. And they have just launched a new subsidiary in South Africa, which is a very large region where from where future growth can be expected. Coming to IT services, the top three bets, Tata LXC, InfoEdge, KPIT, all three of them did reasonably well. As far as Tata LXC was concerned, we, were, we thought that the top line was a little softer than what we expected, especially on the automotive side, given the kind of momentum that tech spending on the automotive side is being seen. However, their commentary was very strong and we believe that growth in top line should bounce back in the next few quarters. InfoEdge, uh, which had corrected very substantially, also clawed back. Nokri, which is their most profitable division, uh, grew at a very solid pace. And even though IT hiring has slowed down, non-IT hiring was very, very robust. Margins were strong and cash flows were very, very strong. And we believe that towards the end of the year, as capacity 
uh, utilization for most IT companies also start to near optimum levels, IT hiring towards the end of the year should also pick up. KPIT continues to be the star. Uh, they delivered almost a breakout performance, uh, very strong growth. Uh, they have upped their guidance again after having increased their guidance in Q3 and the strong momentum continues into the future as well. A sector which didn't do well for many years is now that is making a comeback is autos and auto ancillaries and there Sundram Fasteners delivered a reasonably good set of numbers. Again, we thought that the top line was a little muted than what we expected considering the revival that we've seen in the heavy commercial vehicle industry. However, Sundram outperformed as far as margins were concerned and we've seen a very strong improvement in the margin trajectory and we believe that in the future both top line and margins should improve as both auto and non-auto business continues to grow very, very fast. Coming to Mahindra CI, uh, that's a new entrant. Uh, the company performed extremely well, both on top line and margins. And we believe that as over the next few quarters, they are able to exit the European heavy commercial vehicle business, uh, we should see both return ratios and margins improving even more and the company should get massively re-rated going forward from here. Coming to uh, both TVS and iShare, they did phenomenally well. Both had very strong volume growth and realization growth. TVS, as you know, stands out when it comes to leadership in the e two-wheeler segment. Uh, they have a slew of launches over the coming year and they have exhibited very strong cost control and margin performance. iShare continues to do well. RE is bouncing back and we also believe that the truck division, which is the Volvo truck business, should also go from strength to strength as infrastructure spending and revival in construction improves substantially. Coming to the large industrial conglomerates and capital goods companies, LNT uh, delivered a very strong show. Uh, we had a record order booking for the year and we believe that as uh, uh, infrastructure spending accelerates, construction accelerates, capex in oil and gas accelerates and in defense accelerates, LNT should benefit substantially. LNT, as you all know, that 35% of the value comes from its two IT subsidiaries, LTI, Mindtree and LTTS. Both of them delivered very strong and steady performance and should compound and improve the value overall valuation of LNT as well. Coming to ABB, absolutely breakout performance. Again, very strong uh, top line margin and very strong order book. And we believe that uh, ABB should also go from strength to strength. Coming to Reliance, Reliance showed a steady set of numbers. They continue to win market share in geo. Retail, I think they've done a fabulous job uh, with the kind of scale that they have achieved in retail and oil and gas also continues to deliver very, very strong performance. We should see uh, the demerger of Geo Financial Services and all shareholders of Reliance will get a free share in JFS and that should create even more value. And hopefully over the next 12 to 18 months, as they decide to demerge both Geo and retail, into separately listed company, we believe there could be further value creation that could happen in Reliance as well. And finally, coming to manufacturing, um, which is you know across a whole section of uh, stocks, uh, Dixon, which had a, a problem with its top line growth because of slowing demand uh, on the mobile phone segment, delivered a very strong margin performance. Uh, and the management has also spoken about the potential to win two large global mobile phone customers. So we've seen a very strong pullback rally in Dixon and we continue to believe in the scale 
and capabilities of Dixon going forward from here. Uh, HAL, uh, uh, as you know, is one of the premier defense companies. Uh, their order book continues to be very strong. Uh, they continue to win new orders and margin performance and profit performance continues to be very, very solid. And lastly, Praj, uh, which also delivered very stellar numbers. Finally, margins are coming back uh, in, in Praj and they continue to win orders uh, in the traditional ethanol segment and they continue to innovate. There is a huge potential in sustainable aviation fuel uh, as well as in their engineering business and we believe that Praj, Praj should also grow from strength to strength. So overall, if you look at the top companies across our portfolios, across sectors, they have by and large either delivered as per consensus or handsomely beaten consensus. And that gives us the confidence that we should see a very strong showing from our underlying portfolio companies and that should translate into very strong returns and alpha in the coming quarters as well. So with that, I bid adieu until the next time. Thank you.